right, so the focus of chapter two is on protein structure. Proteins are key components in regulating cellular processes through their abilities to function as enzymes, play structural support roles, mediate communication and cell signaling, and transport molecules to different locations. They come in many sizes and shapes, yet are constructed from the same set of 20 building block amino acids. Understanding this vast diversity is important for understanding disease, medicine, and treatment strategies. Here we will focus on amino acid structure and properties, peptide bond formation and primary protein structure, secondary protein structure, super secondary structure in protein motifs, tertiary and quaternary structure, and the processes of protein folding, denaturation, and hydrolysis. Let's start with a close look at amino acid structure and properties. The major building block of proteins are called alpha amino acids. As their name implies, they contain a carboxylic acid functional group and an amine functional group. The alpha designation is used to indicate that these two functional groups are separated from one another by one carbon group, the alpha carbon. In addition to the amine and the carboxylic acid, the alpha carbon is also attached to a hydrogen and one additional group that can vary in size and length. In this diagram, the group is designated as an R group. Within living organisms, there are 20 amino acids used as protein building blocks. They differ from one another only at this R group position. The 20 amino acids used in protein synthesis can be subdivided into two major types based on the structure of the R group. They can be divided into nonpolar or hydrophobic amino acids or polar and hydrophilic amino acids. Note that this classification scheme is really a sliding scale between the two states. Amino acids with the highest polarity potential will be able to form full charges. Others will carry strong permanent dipoles, some will have weaker permanent dipoles, and others will be very nonpolar and only have London dispersion interactions with other molecules. Each of these broad categories contains subcategories that help us evaluate their reactive potential. For the nonpolar amino acids, this includes the aliphatic and aromatic amino acids, as well as methionine and proline, which don't fit well into the other two categories. The hydrophilic amino acids can be subdivided as polar uncharged, acidic, or basic. Let's take a closer look at these categories starting with the nonpolar aliphatic amino acids. The term aliphatic is used to refer to organic compounds in which carbon atoms form open chains rather than aromatic rings. Thus, the aliphatic amino acids are glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, and isoleucine. You should start learning their three-letter and one-letter codes and be able to recognize their side chains. The next category are the aromatic amino acids. They contain the phenyl ring structure. These include phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. The other two amino acids that have high nonpolar character are proline and methionine. Notice that the R group of proline circles back around and forms a closed ring structure with the amine functional group in the backbone. This causes proline to adopt an alternate conformation, the cis conformation, within the protein backbone compared with the other amino acids that adopt a trans conformation. Thus, prolines often cause direction changes within the three-dimensional structure of the protein and can destabilize secondary structure such as alpha helices or beta pleated sheets. Methionine is also an important amino acid as it is the amino acid that is most often used to begin the translation of a protein. The polar uncharged amino acids carry permanent dipoles that allow them to form hydrogen bonds with water molecules 
and other dipole-dipole interactions. These include amino acids that contain alcohols, thiols, and amides within their R groups. Some polar amino acids may also fully ionize and carry charges. There are two acidic amino acids, glutamic acid and aspartic acid, that can lose a proton from a carboxylic acid functional group and carry a full negative charge on their R groups. There are also three basic amino acids, arginine, lysine, and histidine, that have amine functional groups that can serve as a proton acceptor and act as a Lewis base. When they serve as a proton acceptor, they will carry a positive charge. Here is a chart of all the three-letter and one-letter amino acid codes. You will need to know these. We will be using these designations all term as we continue to study the structures of proteins. Knowing their abbreviations and being able to recognize their side groups and understand their charge states will enable you to better understand enzyme reaction mechanisms and features of protein folding. All but one of the alpha amino acids used for protein synthesis are chiral in nature. Glycine is the exception, which has an H as its R group. Molecules that are chiral are not superimposable with their mirror image. Because of this nature, they are given a special stereoisomer name called enantiomers. And in fact, the compounds themselves are given the same name. These molecules do differ in the way that they rotate plain polarized light and the way that they react with and interact with biological molecules. Molecules that rotate the light in the right-handed direction are called dextrorotary and are given a D letter designation. Molecules that rotate light in the left-handed direction are called levorotary and are given an L letter designation to distinguish one enantiomer from the other. The D and L forms of alanine are shown here. The L form of amino acids are common in nature and are the ones that are incorporated into proteins. An absolute configuration refers to the spatial arrangement of the atoms of a chiral molecule and its stereochemical description, such as R or S, referring to rectus or sinister, respectively. Absolute configurations for a chiral molecule in pure form are most often obtained by X-ray crystallography. Alternative techniques are optical rotary dispersion, vibrational circular dichroism, use of chiral shift reagents in proton NMR, and Coulomb explosion imaging. When the absolute configuration is obtained, the assignment of R or S is based on the kahn ingold prelog priority rules. Amino acids are also known as zwitter ions. A zwitter ion is a molecule with two or more functional groups of which at least one has a positive and one has a negative charge. And the net charge of the entire molecule is zero at a specific pH. Because they contain at least one positive and one negative charge, zwitter ions are also sometimes called inner salts. The charges on the different functional groups balance each other out, and the molecule as a whole can be electrically neutral at a specific pH. The pH where this happens is known as the isoelectric point. In Chapter 1, we reviewed the concept of pKa, which indicates the strength of an acid, or for our purposes, indicates the ability of a functional group to donate a proton. Thus, acidic functional groups Carboxylic acids have low pKa values, and amine, or basic functional groups, tend to have high pKa values. Each ionizable group found within the molecule will have a distinct pKa value. The pH at which the overall molecule carries no net electrical charge is known as the isoelectric point. Amino acids all have at least two pKa values for the main chain carboxylic acid and amine functional groups. Some have additional ionizable groups within their R groups. Due to the variable pKa values, the charge state of amino acids will vary at different pH conditions. 
When a functional group is below its pKa value, it will predominantly be in its protonated form. Above the pKa value, it will predominantly be in the deprotonated form. This graph shows the titration curve for histidine. Histidine has three pKa values, the alpha carboxylic acid at 1.86, the R group amine at 6.04, and the alpha amine group at 9.17. Thus, at different pHs, you can predict the charge state of each ionizable group. For example, at pH values below 1.86, all of the ionizable groups will be protonated. Protonation of the carboxylic acid will neutralize it, while protonation of the amine functional groups means that they will carry a plus one charge. Thus, the overall molecule is at a plus two charge state. In between a pH of 1.86 and 6.04, the carboxylic acid functional group will be deprotonated but both amine groups will still be protonated. This yields a charge state of plus one on the overall molecule. Between a pH of 6.04 and 9.17, both the carboxylic acid functional group and the R group amine will be in the deprotonated state, while the alpha amine group will still be protonated. At this stage, there is no net charge on histidine it is zero, as the charges on the carboxylic acid and the amine functional group cancel each other out. In fact, the isoelectric point of histidine will be at this inflection point at pH 7.64. Above a pH of 9.17, all of the functional groups will be deprotonated and histidine will carry a negative one charge as both the amine groups are in their neutral, deprotonated states. The following diagram shows the amino acids that have ionizable side groups. These include the acidic amino acids, aspartic acid and glutamic acid, and the basic amino acids, lysine, arginine, and histidine. And it also includes two polar, typically uncharged, amino acids, tyrosine and cysteine. The R group of cysteine has a pKa value of 8.33 and the alcohol group of tyrosine has a pKa of 10.07. Thus, for these amino acids to behave as an acid, the pH of the solution has to be quite basic, beyond that which could be supported in biological organisms. However, we will see that the active site of many enzymes is buried deep inside the folded regions of the protein and often excludes water. Under these conditions, the pKa values can shift, causing unexpected behavior. Cysteine and tyrosine are often active site residues involved in the reaction mechanism of enzymes. The thiol functional group of cysteine is also highly susceptible to oxidation and will readily form disulfide bond linkages with other cysteine residues. The formation of disulfide bonds within or between protein sequences have a profound impact on the three-dimensional structure and hence the biological activity of many proteins and peptides. For example, the biologically active form of insulin requires intact disulfide bond formation. In the next section, we will see how the amino acid building blocks are linked together to form the primary structure of peptides and proteins.